Hi, Cody Waite with Weight Endurance here at Session 6, Sport Performance, to show you uh, our second push-pull set of exercises. This time we're focusing on the horizontal pushing and pulling. Last, uh, the last set we did was an overhead, and we'll also have a lower set, but for today we're going to be working on that horizontal pushing and pulling. This is very sport-specific in terms of riding a bike, particularly mountain bikes. We do a lot of pushing and pulling or kind of a rowing motion as we're going up and down terrain, over uh, obstacles, and really um, getting after it on the bike, putting out some power. So it's a really good upper body strengthening, stabilizing. Um, it's going to kind of connect your upper body and core uh, to the bike for more power. So let's get to it. Uh, two movements. The uh, pushing motion or movement we're going to be doing is basically a push-up. Pretty straightforward and simple. Really don't need much equipment here until you know you can add weight to it later as you get stronger. But in general, you really need little to no um, equipment for a push-up. So the, the classic push-up, you're getting down on your toes and your hands. High plank position. We definitely want that good solid plank. We don't want our butt up in the air. And likewise, we don't want to be sagging our back as well. So good high plank. The other thing to think about is cyclists, mountain bikers in particular, is where you put your hands. I think the, you know, the way to do it is get your hands about handlebar grip width apart um, is a great way to think about it. So if you have you know, 720 millimeter bars, you're going to have your grips um, at that certain spot. That's where you're going to be. Quite often, we see mountain bikers in here just naturally falling into that. Position. So we don't worry about narrow push-ups, we're not going ultra-wide, it's kind of right where our grips are on our, when we're riding our bike, okay? So into that high plank, hands grip width apart, and then you're simply going to lower your chest to the floor, maintaining that pike or plank position, and then pushing yourself back up. Pretty straightforward. Not necessarily easy, but straightforward. If your push-up strength isn't quite there yet to do several reps and, and sets of, of push-ups, Couple modifications, very simple to do. The first one would be doing a high plank negative to a knee up, okay? So that's just basically lowering yourself down, then dropping your knees and pushing up that way. So I'm going down in the plank, dropping my knees and pushing myself up. Makes it a little bit easier. You're still getting the negative benefits of lowering your body weight down, but then you get a little assistance by dropping your knees, not having to push up quite as much weight. If that's still a little difficult, the next progression down, make it a little easier is just doing the whole thing. Start in high plank, but then lower your knees and just do a push up from your knees. You can get quite a few reps in that way um, and uh, makes it uh, much more manageable. And as you build strength, progress to that high plank lower and then knee push up up and then eventually you can get to those strict push-ups, okay? So key points, uh, hands, handlebar grip width apart, uh, lowering yourself, get full range of motion, do us the favor, don't do these little half push-ups, get full range of motion, lowering your chest to the ground, and then pushing yourself back up, maintaining that really good uh, plank position throughout the whole uh, motion. All right, so that's the pushing, horizontal pushing, push-ups, really straightforward. The horizontal pulling we're going to do is a, is a row or a bent over row. A couple different ways you can do it. You can use the dumbbell. You can also use a barbell as you get stronger. So dumbbell, what I like to do actually is use one um, dumbbell for this because when you're riding your bike, you, you're not necessarily pulling with both arms at the same time. It's usually more of a alternating pulling motion. So I like using one arm. The other thing I like to do that's kind of more cycling specific is what we do with our feet here. So I think of it as we're, on, we're sit, straddling over our bike, our feet are pedal width and distance apart. Okay, So we're not necessarily straight, we're one foot's forward. You can alternate sets with different feet forward or you know if you always have the one foot forward you can do that but you know alternating is not a bad idea as well. So I'll start with right foot forward, kind of pedal width and distance apart. Now, from here, you're going to do a hip hinge, much like a deadlift position, where you're going to pop your butt back and get into this hinging position. Then you're going to be holding this as if you're holding your uh, handlebars, okay? 
So a way to see this from the side, pedaling stance, pop that butt back, I'm hinging at the hips. This front leg gets a little straighter, you get some tension in your hamstring. The back knee gets bent. This is much like we're um, riding down a trail um, on our mountain bike or really poised on our uh, road bike for a technical descent. And then we're gonna go ahead and just row with the arm that has the weight in it, okay? Some keys here is the, like just about every movement, keep your core really tight and engaged, keep your back flat. We don't want any arching, we more so don't want any rounding. So that hip hinge keeps our back flat and we get into that rowing position. So you'll do your sets of five to 10 with the one arm and then you'll switch to that other arm, okay? That's with the, the dumbbell. So it's two um, sided equals one set. Now as you gain more strength and you wanna start carrying a little heavier load with those rows as you go through the program, moving to a barbell is a good option here. Um, so you use a loaded barbell and basically the move is very much the same but instead of one arm, you're gonna do both arms at the same time, okay? So you get a little bit more weight, maybe slightly less cycling specific, but you get more weight and uh, greater progression that way. So start with good deadlift mechanics to get the bar off the ground. We don't want any jerking, rounding of the back to get it up and, and tweak anything. So good lifting mechanics to get it up. Then get into your split cycling stance, like we're descending, level, uh, pedals parallel, one foot in front of the other. Knees are bent. And then we go into that hip hinge, much like we're gonna, like the top part of the deadlift, where we, where we hinge our hips, pop that butt back, everything's tight. Shoulder blades are back, back is straight, low back is tight, core is tight. And then we're pulling the barbell up and down to our chest. Again, thinking about hands about grip width apart for most specificity. And then you can switch sides, go left foot forward, Hip hinge, get that good position, get some tension in that front hamstring. And get your rows in, okay? Also be careful, good mechanics, lowering the bar down. This position is very similar to, you know, riding a pump track or a good descent and keeping these, the hamstring loaded, the glutes are still loaded. So if you've ever done a long single track descent where you're having to stand up most of the way, you know, you start to feel those muscles burning these will really help kind of offset that, give you that stability and strength and endurance for those longer downhills as well as the pulling power um, for the uphills. All right, so that's our push and pull set number two. That's the horizontal. Um, good luck and have fun.